The first new Ford GT customer cars are starting to be delivered and with that we're finally learning some new information about the car. The owner's manual is now available online and so far that's been our most detailed look into the car yet. That is until instrumented tests come out shortly. If you didn't know already, BBC's Top Gear already got their first drive in the car which means magazine reviews can't be too far behind. Well anyways, today we're going to be talking about some of the most interesting features of the GT discovered through the owner's manual. First thing to go over are some of the unique features of the GT's exterior and structure. It has a carbon fiber tub with an integrated steel roll cage and an aluminum structure to the fore and aft of the tub. As you already probably know, it has a 3.5 liter V6 made into a 7 speed dual clutch unit from Getrag. It has carbon ceramic brakes, optional carbon fiber wheels with 245 section front tires and massive set of 325s out back. And the rims are set in Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. On the interior, the car is a race-inspired steering wheel with a flat top and bottom and buttons that control most of the vehicle's features located right there on the steering wheel. Now, as an aside, people have been saying that the buttons in the Ford GT are straight out of the Ford Focus, and that's just completely wrong. All the buttons in the Ford GT are made out of anodized metal, and though the fonts may be similar to those found in other Ford cars, the buttons themselves are unique to the GT. The race-inspired bucket seat is actually fixed to the carbon bucket of the vehicle itself, so all the controls must be located on the steering wheel so drivers of all sizes can operate the controls comfortably. The steering wheel has tilt and telescopic features to extend towards the driver, and the pedal box even slides toward the driver when a strap on the center console is released. Now there are also cup holders which flip out from the door sill area, and an underseat storage compartment so small items can be stored in the GT while you're driving. And speaking of storage compartments, the owner's manual states to avoid placing objects that could be affected by highs or low temperatures in the rear hatch. Basically, the manual warns about the engine melting your cargo. The seven speed dual clutch transmission is controlled with a dial in the center console. It has normal park reverse and neutral modes as well as a regular automatic mode and a manual drive mode. In regular mode, the car will shift itself like a normal automatic but you still have the ability to select the gear yourself with the paddle shifters. When you use the paddles in auto mode, however, the car will downshift for you if the engine gets too low in the rev range to avoid damage to the engine. In manual mode, however, you have full control over the gears and everything is controlled via the paddle shifters. The car has five different drive modes, normal, sport, wet, track, and VMAX mode. In normal, sport, and wet mode, the suspension is in its highest setting. In VMAX and track mode, the car lowers its ride height by 50 millimeters. In sport mode, the suspension damping settings become tighter, the spoiler raises at 70 miles an hour, and an air brake becomes active when braking above 75 miles an hour. In track mode, the ride height is set all the way down to its lowest setting, the spoiler raises, and an anti-lag system just like the one used in the race car keeps the turbos spooled at all times. The car will also have a launch control which will be available for use in all modes except wet mode. Now arguably the most interesting bit of information we learned from the owner's manual is that there is an upcoming competition model of the Ford GT. Now this is going to be the most hardcore version of the GT, kind of like the 675 LT was to the 650S or the 458 Speciale was to the 458 Italia. It's going to be the lightweight track ready version of the new Ford GT. Even though news of the competition model just broke with the owner's manual being released, we've actually seen the competition model before and Ford has been running a prototype version of the competition model around Detroit for testing. Now much is still unknown about the competition model, but we do in fact know a few key details. The car is going to be designed to save weight and is going to do so by shedding some of its luxury features such as air conditioning and radio in order to be faster than the base GT around the track. Now this car is gonna come with standard carbon, uh, carbon fiber wheels and a standard titanium exhaust system. Another interesting fact about the competition model is it's going to use a thinner pane of glass over the engine bay in order to save weight and it's going to have a manual latch from the rear hatch to open up the engine bay and a prop rod instead of a shock kit to hold the engine bay open in order to save some weight. From a styling perspective, the competition model is going to be distinguished from the other models in one main way as well. It's going to have a single stripe going down the middle of the car, but instead of the stripe being painted on, it's going to be exposed carbon fiber bodywork, which should look really cool when you see it in person with that carbon fiber weave that is so nice on the new Ford GT. 
We were excited to see some of the specs on the competition model as well and see how much faster it is than the regular GT. But without AC, it might be a tough sell to us in Florida. But we'll keep you guys updated on all the news on the regular GT and the competition model as they become available. So let me know in the comments below what you think of the features of the new GT and what you think about the competition model that'll be coming out. Would you rather have the regular base GT with its luxury features or would you rather have the race spec competition model? If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to keep up to date on Ford GT news and to see us take delivery of a new Ford GT in the future. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.